everyone, Grant here from Spectra Racing. So one of the new tools you might have seen in a previous video here we got is a 3D printer. You can actually see it here behind me in the office. The uh, One of the cool things that the 3D printer enables is being able to rapidly prototype ideas and things before we go out and spend money on, you know, the actual product or tool you need. And, uh, you know, you're not going to get the full functionality of it, but you can really do some cool things. So some of the things that I've been working on, uh, you know, you've seen the Garmin Catalyst video I've done where I made the custom mount with that. Uh, but one of the things he, I haven't been talking about much that I've done with the Mustang is I've done a heat exchanger relocation. So my S197 Mustang that you've seen in loads of the videos here, uh, it's endlessly modified. Now this whole modification path is completely useless. I really don't think it's better off, but it's been a real fun project. And I'm learning a lot doing these kinds of rapid prototyping. But anywho, uh, I moved the uh, the heat exchanger from the Mustang from the front of the car to the rear, mostly because uh, the engine temps, actually the supercharger temps, were always fine with the heat exchanger in the front. Uh, but the engine temps were then a little higher, especially on longer tracks like Sebring, which I was preparing for a big race at Sebring. Uh, that is because you know the heat exchanger. Uh, Airflow just dumps right into the radiator then. So it's, you know, you can kind of compromise one or the other. Uh, so I moved the heat exchanger to the trunk. I actually laid it down flat, which I know is not optimal, uh, but didn't have a lot of choices when it comes to, I didn't really want to chop up too much the car. So anywho, laid the heat exchanger down flat in the back. It's actually uh, vented through the spare tire wheel well out to the license plate hole. And... Um, that actually, you know, once I bled all the air, it actually works pretty good. Uh, one of the things I've also done is become a member at a local racetrack here. And that's what, what that's what that's really enabled is being able to test these things um, at the racetrack. Whenever I tested any of these mods, they all worked fine on the street. I can never get enough heat in any of these things to really negatively affect uh, the car's performance on the street. The track is a whole nother animal, and when you're going 100%, you know, wide open throttle for a mile and a half, 100 plus miles an hour, that is way different than just uh, putting around on the street or even doing some pulls on the highway. So, uh, in some testing, you know, I a couple times taken out autocross and the track itself. Uh, I tried a couple different configurations of fans. I kept the two fans that are sucking air down through and out through the license plate. Uh, tried some booster fans, you know, bigger fans. Uh, basically, you know, using fans wasn't creating enough airflow through the heat exchanger. Uh, so obviously I needed to get some high speed, you know, outside air through the system. So one of the things I wanted to do is try NACA ducts. And before I went out and bought, uh, you know, the tubing and the NACA ducts themselves, which is not too expensive, but it's still about $150 worth of parts. Uh, is just try it myself and make sure the NACA ducks in the position I wanted to put them would actually work. So I found a file on Thingiverse, the 3D printed uh, kind of repository for free 3D printed files. And, uh, you know, I took the um, uh, the window, window louver off the Mustang. So one of the cool things you can do is there's a lot of free tools on the line. Uh, if you need to, so in my case, I had the NACA duct, but I had to create a, you know, a window louver replacement to put the NACA duct in. So what I did is I actually took a completely kind of 2D flat down picture of the the glass that I took off the Mustang just using some piano wire and the, the heat gun and took a 3D, uh, took a 2D picture and uh, put that into a free Photoshop program. Uh, and then created a negative and was just a black and white, you know, kind of transparent uh, negative and brought it in to, I found a program online, just a website where you can import a 2D picture. So in my case, my picture was just kind of a, kind of, you know, the shape of the window louver and imported it and it created a 3D, uh, you know, kind of flat file out of this. So I had my, you know, 3D file window louver. So then you can take the NACA duct, put it onto this 3D file of the the uh, the window louver, you know, take the negative and uh, 
So the problem then is that this whole thing was about, you know, it was about 15 inches long. So the annoying part of this whole process was my 3D printer is only, I think, uh, it's like 11 by 8 by 8. So I had to cut it up uh, and cut up the file and paste it all back together. You can see some of these pictures here and how it all kind of came together and the, uh, you know, <laughs> I had to use a couple of different colors and I tried painting it. Um, the actual product itself, I'm still kind of new to 3D printing, so it didn't come out that great. But functionality wise, uh, which is all that matters for this step of this rapid prototyping, is uh, all that really matters. So I got it all working, had to glue all the separate pieces together. Uh, it is really fascinating, you know, dumping the NACA duct into this negative that I created because it just matched perfectly. Uh, so the next thing I did is bought a cheap uh, anemometer on Amazon, uh, the Bluetooth one, so I didn't have to <laughs> figure out a way to watch the wind speed coming through. I put the anemometer behind the NACA duct, and you know I wanted to make sure that like with the window closed or window open to see what kind of differences it would make and how effective it was. The the effectiveness of the NACA ducts I read online from you know random websites, not sure how truthful they are. Uh, set about 50% efficiency at speed, um, and that's exactly what I was getting using this kind of <laughs> not great looking but functional NACA duct uh, I got from the internet, literally. And, you know, at 60 miles an hour, I was getting 30 miles an hour with uh, air, air through this hole here on the NACA duct. Um, so with that, I proved that it would work, and I could go spend the money and... Um, you know, I put it all together and did a few events early on with it. And uh, definitely with the two NACA ducks I'm running now, it is almost enough. Uh, it was plateauing about, you know, my intake air temperature was plateauing around 150 degrees, which is too high, obviously. But that was after, you know, 20 plus minutes of running. So I definitely need probably to double, I'm thinking, the airflow currently. Uh, so it is going to require cutting some holes in the car, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, <laughs> car already has a lot of holes cut in it anyway. So what's another one? But anywho, uh, I just wanted to go over that quick, you know, kind of the process I've been taking using some of these uh, cool 3D printed parts like the, the Garmin Catalyst, which, uh, you know, that was an actual product that um, I made. And, you know, this time I was trying to see if, using these NACA ducts would actually work. Uh, you know, I had seen people using them for brake ducts, but I wasn't sure how effective it would be using it uh, for a heat exchanger, which I've never seen anyone do it. Putting the heat exchanger in the back of the car uh, has, you know, it, it's a challenge because uh, the few people I've seen uh, do it, uh, you know, uh, there was a time attack car I think I found where someone cut a gigantic hole uh, in the side of their car in order to get enough airflow. So uh, trying something different here and definitely learning a lot about airflow and 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 one of the other uh, benefits of doing this whole process is, is the handling of the car has just been uh, much, much better. Uh, the heat exchanger and, and large reservoir I'm running now, uh, the total weight of this is probably 80 plus pounds, you know, and I already had the battery in the back of the car. And the first autocross that I ran with this setup, um, the car is just so much better balanced. It's a little less oversteer happily, uh, much more neutrally balanced. It's it's actually starting to handle almost <laughs> almost closer uh, to the neutrality of the Tesla that I autocross, where that thing is just perfectly balanced because of all the weight in the middle because of the battery. Uh, but that's enough for this rambling on about um, the heat exchanger relocation. I'll be sure to do an update on uh, once I get it fully uh, functional and got all the bugs worked out. It, you know, honestly looks pretty rough right now, but I'm going to get it looking a lot nicer. You know, some automotive carpet and clean it up. So, uh, and then I'll talk about uh, in, a, in the next video uh, what happened when I took it to Sebring for the first time and what broke. Um, spoiler, it was not the heat exchanger. That's it. Thanks for watching.